Hey folks, welcome back to the Sedgwick Jimmy channel. We're certainly glad to see you, and today we're looking at the Stockholm Bloodbath of 1520. What led to the execution of nearly 100 people? Well, that's what we're here to talk about, so let's get into it. Okay, so to understand the bloodbath, you need to understand what led to it, and that was the Kalmar Union. The Kalmar Union was a union, imagine that, of separate states, and in this case, mostly Scandinavian holdings that were ruled by a single monarch. This union lasted on and off from 1397 to 1523, and was primarily dominated by Dun and was primarily dominated by Denmark's rule. Now, much of the Swedish nobility was growing tired of being bossed around by the Danish king, and when time came to pick a new region of the country, an anti-unionist, Sten Sturr the Younger, son of the previous regent, staged a coup over the pro-union Eric Troll. Sten ended up in conflict with Eric's son, Gustav, who was a bishop that Sten spread rumors about, deposed, and caused him to hold out against the siege in his fortress. This is where Christian II comes in. Christian II became king of Denmark and leader of the Kalmar Union after his father's death and sought to help Gustav in his siege, seeing as Gustav was pro-union and all. He sent a force to aid in the siege, but it was defeated by Sten's forces and they returned to Denmark. Put a pin in Gustav, he'll be important later. He returned a year later, again was defeated, and again returned to Denmark. On his third attempt, he sent a mostly mercenary force and was able to finally defeat the Swedes. Also in this battle, Stur was mortally wounded and he ended up dying on a frozen lake. And since there was now no force between his army and Uppsala, where the rich dog of the estates was located, the Swedish nobles chose to negotiate a peace. Christian II agreed to terms with the nobility. He would rule over them, but he forgave all past transgressions and would allow Sweden to be ruled under their own laws and customs. However, Sten's widow, Lady Christina, held up the fight. She was able to fight off the Danish forces until she too reached a peace agreement with Christian, where she also received a pardon as well as land holdings. Everything seemed fine and on the up and up as Christian was crowned as King of Sweden. After he was sworn to oath, Christian held three days of feast to celebrate. He invited a large number of Swedish leaders and nobility for a meeting at the palace, and on the evening of November 8, 1520, a group of Danish soldiers entered the Great Hall and began to take the Swedes away, imprisoning them. The next day, a court under the direction of Gustav Troll, told you he'd be back again, began to try the prisoners for heresy. And considering these people were targeted because either A, they had previously made moves against Gustav, B, they were potential rivals to Christian's rule, or C, all the above, they were quickly found guilty. Starting that day and into the next, nearly a hundred people, including nobles and bishops, were hung or beheaded. Most of the spouses and children, including Lady Christina, were imprisoned but spared from execution. According to the executioner, 82 people were killed, though it's argued by many to be closer to a hundred. <laughs> The bloodbath had significant repercussions. One of the men executed, Erik Johansson, had a son named Gustav who would lead a Swedish rebellion and retake Sweden, becoming king and being heralded today as the father of the nation, much in the same way we Americans view George Washington. This also created a rift between Sweden and Denmark that lasted for hundreds of years and is also the reason that the king went down in history as Christian the Tyrant. And that's just going to about do it for our quick stroll through Swedish history. And if you liked it, why don't you give us a like? If you want to see more, give us a subscribe. But if you have anything to add or any ideas for future episodes, why don't you let us know down in the comments? We appreciate you watching and hope to see you back here in the future for more Sedgwick Jimmy. Come check it out.